My name is Professor Yanni Maria. I'm from the Department of Water and Sanitation at the University of Limpopo. I'm also collaborating closely with Rockwater Technologies. Rockwater Technologies has received projects from SRIP and Water Research Commission. And the research work on these projects are carried out by students, PhD students from the University of Limpopo, as well as four M Engineering students from Swan University of Technology. In my profession, I focus on water treatment. And in water treatment, that is a multidisciplinary area. You need input from chemists, uh, microbiology, chemical engineering. Uh, so we collaborate closely with uh, the departments of chemical engineering, departments of chemistry, and the department of water and sanitation. So the focus in my career was on removal of sulphate. Mine water is rich in sulphate as well as metals. Also um, effluents from the power stations uh, rich in SO2s, sulphur dioxide. So in, in, the, in my career at CSIR, TUT and University of Limpopo, much focus was given at, on, on various technologies that can be used for treatment of such effluents. So I focused on neutralization of acid mine water with limestone that was implemented in South Africa at several places, as well as in Botswana and Australia. I also focused on barium, the barium process for sulfate removal, which was adopted by the Western Utilities Corporation in their initiative to treat acid mine water on a commercial basis. There was also the biological sulfate removal process that was implemented on full scale by Anglo-American Co. And then lately the focus is on freeze crystallization where brines rich in salt need to be treated in order to achieve zero waste disposal. Legislation has become stricter over time. In 1980, when I started at the CSIR, it was only required from the mining industry to neutralize acid water and then they could discharge it into public streams after receiving a permit from the Department of Water and Sanitation. By 2000, it was needed for the mines to desalinate mine water using more advanced processes like reverse osmosis. And, um, and several full-scale plants were constructed in Mpumalanga. Currently, the requirement is zero waste disposal. By that means, the brine that is produced during reverse osmosis that was up to now stored in evaporation ponds that need now to be treated and removed from site. To transport and dispose this brine at the toxic waste disposal sites is very costly and cannot be afforded by the mining industry. So with the freeze crystallization process that we have developed one can now recover the salt in that water, and typically in the mine water we recover sodium sulfate. And then with our third project the focus is on the conversion of that sodium sulfate to sodium carbonate, which is the alkali that is needed in the first place for neutralization of the acid mine water. And then in order to reduce costs further, uh, with the, by using sodium salts one can recover uh, metals in the water selectively. For instance, in the case of, of the mine water that we treated, ferric hydroxide can be recovered and by through further heating, pigment can be recovered from the ferric hydroxide. Now pigment is needed, is used in paint and tiles to provide color. So that is currently imported by South Africa. Uh, one of our master students at TUT focused now on the treatment of SO2, the sulfur dioxide that is produced by the power stations. Uh, desulfurization of coal is a, is a requirement. Uh, and in South Africa, the first power station that has adopted flue gas desulfurization is Kusile Power Station. And the, the master's thesis of Asser Tal, one of our students, focus exactly on that, using freeze crystallization as an alternative to evaporation. My name is Mpora Mutole. I'm from a small village in Limpopo called Rampatele. 
Um, I went to the high school there and then I continued to Swan University of Technology TUT in Pretoria. That's where I studied my diploma in chemical engineering. I continued into BTEC. I'm currently working with Prof. Yanni Marie with our projects mostly in wastewater treatment where we work on uh, wastewater from the mines, um, from industries. Um, currently we work with Athema Retort Technologies where we are treating their water from the main plant and we recover salt from them in the form of sodium sulfate. Um, we've recently just uh, got analysis from the sodium sulfate that it's actually 99% pure and uh, that was a good result for us and it was a good feedback in terms of the process of our, the progress of our project as well and uh, we will be looking towards um, upscaling the pilot plant that we currently running at the Athema where we as I said that we are running the plant for them to treat their wastewater. Um, Growing up in a village, I, I grew up around a lot of workshops where we always, um, my dad's friend was a mechanical engineering, so we always working around him, helping him, and that, I think that's what ignited the passion towards the engineering field. And then along that, my friend who was slightly older than me went to TUT before me and he did metallurgy there. But as we were talking, when he came back home, he told me about the chemical engineering, which was quite interesting. Funny enough, I wanted to do electrical engineering, but when he started telling me about the, how interesting the chemical engineering is, how broad it is, where you can end up in food industry, where you can end up in mining. For instance, I ended up in water treatment, and there's quite some broad opportunities where you can even work at a brewery, you can work at Sasso, all these big industries, they take chemical engineering. So I looked at the opportunities and I thought maybe I should go for chemical engineering and since I started I've never looked back and fortunately I've, when I was completing my diploma in chemical engineering I met Prof Yanni Marie when he was still with TUT working in the lab and he introduced me to the water treatment where we're using freeze technology. It's, it's a very interesting technology that comes from a principle of the sea water where the ice form it floats on top of the sea. Um, and the water stays at the bottom. So that's where the principle of the frizz came. And as you would know, that um, when you form ice, it floats. And we're, using, we're still using the same principle with Prof. Madi on our research where we freeze the water and the ice, the, which is water in purest form, floats. And then we take the ice as our product and then the dirty water goes away. And yeah, that, that's what we've been doing in the past five years. Um, the first two years was at the lab in TUT where we are still research and development. But uh, three years back, he got an opportunity to come work closely with Athema and they built a demonstration plant. But very, very fast it progressed into a, in, instead of just being a demonstration pilot plant into a production where we were able to treat water on a daily basis for Athema. And on, on average, we're able to receive, to recover even six tons of salt or even more. Some months we can go as much as 10 tons of salt a month. And it, it's been progress since. And we, we, we've been, every year we have development towards the technology and how the whole process works. We've always found some, something new to add onto the project and develop it. And it's moving step by step. I mentioned earlier that um, we started as just 300 liters per hour plant, but for now we're at the stage where we can even reach um, 10 cubic meters a day of processing, which we can even go to 20 cubes maybe very soon, um, just to keep the, our plant growing and to reach the stage where it's in, even at the industry level. Because like I said, it started in the lab with the small beakers and We've grown now where we're using bigger clarifiers of 1,000 liters and we can even go bigger from here. Yeah, currently I have two PhD students at the University of Limpopo and I also supervise and co-supervise four M engineering students at Swan University of Technology. So a typical day would be uh, to um, have interaction for one hour, two hours a day at a time with each of the students and then one will plan the next experiment, process the data 
and also do the, uh, assist with the writing of the, the results in the form of a publication or the thesis. So it requires for me to travel from time to time to Polokwane to assist with um, practicals or to teaching. Uh, now with COVID, most of the lecturing and consultation with students we do via online facilities. Here at the university, I have followed the subjects chemistry, physics and mathematics, but uh, it became clear to me that chemistry would be an interesting subject for me, especially the inorganic and uh, physical chemistry. Uh, and I enjoyed that very much to, to produce, to treat water and uh, then to recover products of value out of the water. Yeah, I grew up in the Free State, the of well, a small town. Um, my main interest was always the, the subjects like mathematics and then physics and chemistry and accounting. Um, I must say, because I started when I go to school at a young age, at five, I had to catch up with my classmates. I remember my first position in, was the 27th position out of a class of 50. Uh, fortunately, as time goes, in the, by grade 3, I've moved up to the 6th position. And by grade 11, 12, I was under the top 3. And that, together with uh, participation in long distance running, uh, convinced me that I should follow a career in science. Yeah, the message that we can bring after 30 years of experience is you must look at the different opportunities. Every, every technology that you investigate has a place, but it doesn't mean it will be the final solution. And, um, and then also when it comes to approval of, of your proposals, you must al always accept that there will be failures and there will be acceptances. Okay, our focus up to now was to treat mine water uh, so that you can produce clean water, drinking water suitable for discharge into the public streams. Um, and also with the aim of zero waste. But now the question asks, does it make sense to discharge very pure water, drinking water into the rivers that al already contain pollutants like semi-treated uh, sewage? So a new initiative from our side, from the University of Limpopo, in collaboration with Rock Water Technology, is to, um, to use that water for small-scale uh, intensive farming. We do that in collaboration with a company that has already made much progress in Africa in this regard. Uh, so with, through that approach, the focus would be on training of small farmers, upcoming farmers, uh, and that in that way one would be able to contribute to food production and job creation. Yeah, I, I think it's, it provides great satis satisfaction when you see a project is reach the stage of implementation. If you can see that here is the pigment, you can sell it. It also provides satisfaction if the a publication is completed and published and when a student graduates. What is also most rewarding is if you follow the career of an ex-student and you see how they progress uh, in their career. So we have several students that uh, progress to the level of uh, managers. Uh, when my first third project in 2002, there was an operator uh, after his studies and after that he continued with his master studies and currently he's the CEO of one of the water boards.